for part A, we're trying to show that this identity is true. So when you're trying to prove identities, you want to usually start with one side, manipulate it, and then try and get it to look like the other side. Now you can manipulate both sides at the same time as well. In this case, there probably is no need. You would pick the more complex looking side to start with. So I'm going to start with the left hand side. There's more going on there. The numerator to me looks like it will eventually become a quadratic. If we were to use this identity and then rearrange for sine squared, and then we can sub that in our numerator. So our numerator then becomes 10 times 1 minus cos squared theta minus 7 cos theta plus 2 all over the same denominator that we had, so 3 plus 2 cos theta. Expand out the numerator. Denominator stays the same. Simplify the numerator, and I'm also going to factorize out a minus sign, just so it's easier to factorize that quadratic. The minus 10 cos squared theta, that will become, so take out the minus sign, that becomes 10 cos squared theta. The minus 7 cos theta becomes positive 7 cos theta. The 10 and the 2 become 12, but then we're taking out a minus sign, so that now becomes minus 12. And again, that's all divided by 3 plus 2 cos theta. Okay, so this is a quadratic. Now imagine that cos theta is equal to x. So we're factorizing 10x squared plus 7x minus 12. So notice how for all of these, you want to be using triple equals signs. So what we're doing is we're starting with our left-hand side. We're manipulating each step sequentially. You can very clearly see what the alteration has been to each line. And then eventually we're going to end up with something which is the right-hand side. And then on my right-hand side over here, I'm just doing my, let's say, rough calculations. So this is my solution. What I have on the right-hand side is just helping me get there. So this wouldn't form part of our working. We need to factorize this. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give minus 12 times 10, which is minus 120, and add together to give 7. And those would be 15 and minus 8. So then we can rewrite this quadratic as 10x squared plus 15x minus 8x minus 12. Then we factorize each half. So the left-hand side, we can take out a factor of 5x, and we're left with 2x plus 3. The right-hand side, we can take out minus 4. And again, we're left with 2x plus 3. So these two brackets are the same, so that is what we want. And then we take out a common factor of 2x plus 3 from both halves, and then we're left with 5x minus 4. So this is the factorized form of the numerator with x being cos theta. So let's now write this as, so minus brackets. So 2x plus 3, I'll start with that. That will be 2 cos theta plus 3, as x is cos theta. And the 5x minus 4, well, 5 cos theta minus 4, all over 3 plus 2 cos theta. These two things are the same, so they cancel out. This is just written the other way around. So then I would then write my next line as minus 5 cos theta minus 4, or 4 minus 5 cos theta, multiplying out the minus sign. And hopefully that is our right-hand side, yes. So then to end our proof, triple equals right-hand side. So that is part A done. On to part B, hence solve this equation between 0 and 360. Okay, so let's look at the similarities between what we have here and what we have here. The left-hand sides are exactly the same. So that tells me that we're going to be replacing what we have here with this, but it will be cos x instead of cos theta. So our equation for part B would then become 
So 4 minus 5 cos x is equal to 4 plus 3 sine x. 4's cancel out. I'm going to divide both sides by cos x, and I'm going to switch the two sides around as well. So 3 sine x over cos x is equal to minus 5. Sine over cos is tan. Bring the 3 to the right-hand side, so divide both sides by 3. And we get this. And again, we're solving between 0 and 360, I believe. Yep. 0 is included as well. So now we can do inverse tan of minus 5 over 3, which is minus 59.04. OK, so we want to solve it in the interval of 0 to 360. A tan graph repeats itself every 180 degrees. If I were to do a very quick sketch of a tan graph, so there are our asymptotes. Here are the curves. I'm going to draw between minus 360 to 360. So this would be minus 360. This here would be 360. So the graph repeats itself every 180 degrees. So then if that's the case, we can just simply add 180 to this number as many times as we need to to get all of the values in this domain. So to illustrate that graphically, minus 59 is going to be around here somewhere. So this, so this is the minus 59. This value here would have been the minus 5 over 3. So let's put that on the diagram. This is minus 5 over 3. And then we go across. These would be our next two angles, that one and this one. Bear in mind this angle here is 180. So we get two solutions, one somewhere between 90 and 180, and one somewhere between 270 and 360. And we can work those two things out by just doing 180 added to the minus 59.04. So then our two solutions, adding 180 to this once, would give us 120 point, so how many dp do you want it to? Doesn't say number of decimal places we want, so I'm just going to give it to one. That'll be 121.0. Add 180 one more time, and we end up with 301.0. If we add 180 again, it wouldn't be in our domain, so we stop here. These are our two solutions. So for tan, whenever you have a tan graph and you're trying to solve it in a particular domain, you don't need to worry usually about sketching the graph. You can just add or subtract 180 as many times as you need to to your principal value, which is the first value you get in your calculator. And that should give you all of the angles in your domain.